welcome to my first ever attempt at producing a video. What I want to do today is review the test battle that I recently completed using the new Battlefield mod released by Cornitz. Now Cornitz has been working on this mod for several months now and I've been monitoring its evolution and development with quite a lot of interest. What Cornitz has asked for is direct feedback from the player community on the results so far. And so I recently downloaded this mod and used it to play the test battle you're about to watch. The mod itself makes a number of quite radical changes to the gameplay that experienced Empire Total War players will be used to. And so as we go through the replay, I want to try and explain what's happening and my understanding of why the mod produces results you will witness on the screen. When Cornet started work on this mod, his aim was to produce a battlefield experience which was a totally accurate reflection of the 18th century European battlefield. Unfortunately, some compromises have had to be made because of the inherent shortcomings of the Empire Total War game engine, which really wasn't designed to handle the complexities of the period. Nevertheless, you will see that a lot has changed and the end result is significantly different to the vanilla game and it requires a much different approach from the player to ensure victory. So that's the background. I hope you find the video and the mod interesting. Before we proceed, I'd just like to apologise to Cornitz for how long it's taken me to provide this feedback. Obviously there was quite a learning curve involved in producing the video itself. But I'm hoping that as a video it will produce a lot more interest and comment from those who are about to watch it than say a forum posting. Anyway, let's get on and look at uh, the setup for the battle itself. Normally when I'm testing something I choose a perfectly flat map so that there's no <coughs> interference from terrain. But as this particular mod is intended to change the entire battlefield experience, I wanted to opt for a map which would force both armies involved to manoeuvre a bit more in order to uh, test the mod more thoroughly. Um, I didn't want to go for something too mountainous, which would be unrealistic for an 18th century battlefield. So in the end, I chose this map, Homestead 1, which as far as I could see from the picture, uh, contained a reasonable mix of sort of flat areas, small hills and small woods. Cornitz has recommended that um, we choose the late period when we're testing this mod. Um, so I've set that up and that we stick to playing either Prussia or Austria as he's tailored the mod to to um, handle those two armies correctly. So I've chosen to play Prussia in this instance against an Austrian army. This is the army I've selected. It consists obviously of a general. There are eight battalions of infantry. Have their own numbers. Then there are two regiments of dragoons, two regiments of heavy cavalry, cuirassiers in fact, and then I've added three batteries of light three pounder or six pounder artillery. Um, I didn't choose the 12 pounders because I wanted to sort of try and represent battalion guns rather than heavy field artillery in this instance. I think the battalion guns were more common uh, at this period. So that's the Prussian army. Um, I'll just let you have a look at uh, the Austrian army before we go on. For the Austrian army I chose um, two Hussar regiments, Esther Hazy and Kaiser. Three, all three of the Carissa 
the vocabulary reference, which gives the Austrians a slight advantage in cavalry. Um, again, sticking to light guns, two three pounder batteries, two six pounder batteries, giving them a slight advantage in artillery too. And then um, eight infantry battalions, which is the same number as the Prussian army. So, um, Hungarian regiment. I avoided the um, tended to avoid the light troops on for both armies because I wanted to stick to formal tactics if I could. final step then is to come up with a cunning plan which will ensure victory for the Prussian army. Um, <clears throat> as you can see the area around the Prussian deployment zone was pretty much perfectly flat um, and to be honest if this was a campaign battle I'd probably be really boring and deploy the Prussian army well back on this flat area and just let the Austrians come across the broken ground, get themselves in a mess and defeat them in detail as they try to deploy on the open area this side of the battlefield. Um, but that wouldn't really be a very good test for the mod. So I'm going to try to be a little bit more adventurous and have a look at... Um, what options I've got to take the battle across to the Austrians. Now, if I look at the other side of the battlefield, the Austrian deployment zone is equally flat. So there's a large flat area on both sides of the battlefield with this broken ground in the middle. What I don't want to do is advance my army across this broken area and have to try and deploy right in the face of the Austrian army on this side because that's just going to invite them to do to me exactly what I would want to do to them. Um, so I don't think advancing across the centre is a very good idea. I did look at this. Um, there are two roads that leave the Prussian deployment zone and seem to head across to the Austrian one, but there is this sort of choke point in the middle where the two roads converge. So that's going to just congest my troops into a rather nasty area. There's even a wood in the way as well. Um, so I don't think that's a very good idea. The area over this side to the sort of Prussian left of the road. Um, don't like the look of that really. Um, too many woods. There's some quite steep escarpments there. Uh, I think my artillery would have trouble getting across that with any degree of speed so a sort of left flank move here probably isn't a good idea it was when I actually looked at the other side of the battlefield on the right flank that I noticed what I suppose is supposed to be the main feature of this map there's this um, it's a sort of a gorge that goes straight through from the Prussian side to the Austrian side and just to the right of that is another one it's not quite so steep sided so you've got these two sort of um, valleys or gorges that go straight across the map and I think I'm going to try to exploit those if I deploy my army in two columns and send one column through this gorge and one through this valley then the idea would be to emerge from the Austrian side on the Austrian side of the map deploy into line on their flank and basically roll them up from left to right um, now obviously the Austrians aren't going to be sitting around waiting for that to happen um, and there is a risk that they're going to just swing round and um, destroy my army as it's trying to get through this defile but I don't think it's too much of a risk 
looked at it, looking at it from the Austrian side. That high ground actually hides my army. Um, now, obviously, the AI can see it because it can see everything, but it does mean that the Austrian artillery isn't going to be able to interfere with my columns as they're advancing because the round shot's just going to bounce off the hills. It's not going to hit my columns. And if they actually do the stupid thing and come across here and try to attack the column in the flank, they can get up to the top of this hill, but they can't actually get down into contact with my column. So it could be a bit uncomfortable for, for my left hand column, but it wouldn't be disastrous as long as they um, keep calm and keep marching. They're going to take casualties, but they're not going to actually be stopped. More importantly, the right hand column, they can't even get to. It's protected by this gorge here. Worst case scenario, if, if I was playing a human player, then I would be really worried that what I would do if I was the Austrians is basically move my army and deploy it across here, right at the mouth of the two defiles, and blast the Prussian army to pieces as it emerged. Um, I'm relying on the AI not being that clever, to be honest. Um, there's also a very interesting, I noticed this, very interesting little hill here, right in the path that the Austrian army would probably take to interfere with my march. It's only a small hill, but it's completely um, impassable from the Austrian side. So as the Austrian army moves to intercept my flank march, it's going to have to make a decision whether to go left or right. A human player would almost certainly take his entire army to the left and use this hill as as support for their right flank and deploy across here. But I suspect that the AI is going to divide their army into two. Some will go around that way, some will go in that way. If they go around this way, they've got a problem. They've got a wood here, which is restricting their right flank. They've got a wood here, which is in their way. As I said before, they can't actually get anywhere if they go up this hill. So they're going to then find themselves in a, in a very condensed area with the only exit being through this gap between this wood and this hill. And if they try and filter their army through there, and my army emerges here, they're going to be in trouble. So I'm hoping that, although it's a risk, it's going to pan out, and I'm going to give the Austrian army quite a nice headache. So... I'm already deploying my army, ready to make this move. Um, cavalry in front, um, infantry divided into two columns behind, uh, and artillery, horse artillery in support of the cavalry and of the infantry. So we're off.